So good afternoon and uh, or good morning if you are on the other side of the Atlantic. Uh, I'm Dr. Costantino Grasso and in my capacity of principal investigator of the research project Whistling at the Fake, the crucial role of whistleblowers in countering disinformation, I'm honored to officially welcome you uh, to our final international conference. We are thrilled uh, about what promises to be a fascinating discussion we will have today and tomorrow. So without any delay, I would like to give immediately the floor to Professor Andrew Francis, who serves as Deputy Pro Vice Chancellor at the Faculty of Business and Law, as well as Dean of the Manchester Law School at the Manchester Metropolitan University. Professor Francis will now offer his preliminary remarks. Dear Andrew, the floor is yours. Thank you, Costa, and hello and, and welcome, everybody. As, as Costa said, um, my name is Andrew Francis. So the pleasure and privilege of being the Dean of Manchester Law School, and I'm also Deputy Faculty Pro-Vice-Chancellor here in the Faculty of Business and Law at Manchester Metropolitan University. And it's, it's an absolute pleasure to, to welcome everybody here today, well, virtually at least, to, to Manchester Law School and, and to the wider institution. And I very much hope that before too long, we'll be able to welcome many of you uh, to what is today, as, as it always is really a very bright, sunny city, uh, and to welcome you here in person. So our law school, Manchester Law School, is a law school that has very deep connections to professional practice through our teaching and through our research. And we're known for practice engaged legal education and have research strengths as well across equality and human rights, uh, place and sustainability, and sports and popular culture with a, a really strong focus on social change and sustainability and the opportunities that we seek to create for our students and crucially the impact that we generate through our research and it's because of this really cool focus on impact engagement and a close attention to the to the role that law can play in addressing some of the most fundamental questions that our society that our world faces that we're absolutely delighted to be able to welcome you here today and to host this stage of a, of a crucially important project. The importance of reliable information from trustworthy sources and then the role that whistleblowers have in ensuring this continues to have a huge resonance across a very, very wide range of sectors. And, and perhaps has assumed an ever greater importance and, and perhaps an even greater importance than when this project was initially conceived and funded. My colleague Costa will introduce the, the, the detail of, of the programme and some of the housekeeping dimensions in a moment, but I, I'm, I'm struck by a couple of things really as, uh, as I look ahead over the next two days and, and think about the questions uh, that you were all engaged with. I think the first point is just the huge range of really fundamental issues to which these important questions attach. So whether that be issues around climate science, corporate life, um, military conflict, these are all incredibly important spheres of, of, of life that sort of touch the very fabric of our existence that really connect very deeply to, to matters that are, are, are close to all of us in, in all of our communities uh, around the world. And because of the importance of these issues to the different aspects of our life, accuracy matters hugely. And it's, it, it's really exciting um, and really very powerful to see the close attention that's been paid to these questions in, in the papers and the reports that have been presented as part of the project. I think the second issue that strikes me and I think runs throughout the two days of the, of the program is really the, the quality, the reach and, and actually the interdisciplinarity of the spread of the international contributors who have been engaging throughout the, the course of this project and who are taking part uh, during the next two days. Our world has never been more connected and it's it's not just in the technology like this that underpins our communications with us it's it's the interlinked challenges really that we all face they are not issues that we can 
tackle and, and think about in isolation. And it's a great fillet really to the to the optimist in me to see so many high quality international speakers coming together to, to reflect upon these challenges in, in such a collaborative and, and, and such a constructive manner. I'm really very, very proud to see this project and to see these questions tackled here within this law school. I'm very grateful to, to, to Costa and the other panelists and, and, and project organizers for, for taking this, this forward. I really hope that everyone has a, has a very productive and enjoyable series of discussions over the course of the next uh, couple of days. I'm, I'm very sorry that I'm, I'm not able to stay for all of the proceedings, but very much looking forward to seeing the, the, the fruits of the discussions and indeed the final report emerging from the project. So thank you very much uh, again for coming along today. I hope everybody has, uh, as I say, a very sort of constructive series of conversations and I wish you all the best uh, in your future endeavors. Thank you very much. Costa. Thank you very much, Andrew, for, for presenting our law school and for such an insightful opening. And uh, I will now briefly illustrate uh, the research project, offering an overview of the activities that we have carried out. So let me now share a, um, a presentation with you. So. So whistling at the fake, uh, the crucial role of whistleblowers encountering this information is a multidisciplinary research project um, aimed at addressing the gap of citizen comprehension of forms, means, and impacts of mal disinformation. The project has been characterized by a special focus on the crucial role whistleblowers and other knowledgeable insiders play in exposing misleading and hostile formation activities yeah. and increasing uh, public residents uh, um, to acts of this nature. Uh, the project has been funded by NATO's uh, uh, Public Diplomacy Division as part of its Resilience Project, which aim at enabling NATO countries to be more resilient to hostile information activities. We are deeply grateful uh, to our funder, not only because this research project would not have been possible, of course, without the support and funding from NATO, but also because NATO has demonstrated to be a reliable funder which supports meritorious activities and allows researchers to develop the research strategies and carry out the research activities in total autonomy. Um, the project has been managed by Manchester Metropolitan University, and here I would like to express my gratitude to all the academic and administrative staff that have supported our research project. In particular, I would like to give a special thank you to our head of the law school. You just heard from him, Professor Andrew Francis, to our research uh, lead at the law school, Professor Mark James, and uh, to Anish Kurian, who is our research knowledge exchange delivery manager at the Manchester Metropolitan University. Um, the research team is a very small research team. We were just two. Um, uh, I, I, am, I served as the principal investigator and I also serve as associate professor in business and law at Manchester Law School. And then uh, I had the pleasure to cooperate with uh, Stephen Holden, a senior research assistant in the project, a PhD candidate at Manchester Law School. And this is the right moment for me to thank Stephen very much for the way in which he has conducted this role for his enthusiasm and professionalism. He has gone the extra mile in providing research and administrative support. So thank you very much, Stephen. Of course, it, was, it won't be possible to do whatever we have done without the involvement, participation, and support of um, several scientific and impact partners uh, we enjoyed the support um, of. So let me briefly uh, introduce the research partners to you. Uh, first of all, we have uh, enjoyed the support of three renowned academic institutions with which uh, we established a close scientific cooperation. We have uh, Boston College, where we had the privilege of cooperating with Professor Diana Ring, who is interim dean of faculty and professor of law at Boston College Law School. I would like to express to Diane my deep gratefulness and appreciation for being a constant source of inspiration and support. She has not only served as a cru crucial project scientific advisor, but she's also brilliant the moderator at uh, international roundtables. Uh, during the international conference, this one, she will not only moderate the first panel, but also offer a final remarks at the end uh, of both day of discussion. It has not only been an honor, but also a great pleasure to cooperate with her. 
We look forward to our contribution today and tomorrow. We've also established a partnership with the University of Padova Law School and with the Law School of the University of Tilburg. We are grateful to both Professor Maurizio Bianchini and Professor Joseph McCary. The project has been greatly enriched by their expertise and support. The project has also benefited from the participation of a group of internationally renowned impact partners. Such a partnership of organizations as include the Center for the Study of Democracy, which is an European public policy institute, which is well known internationally for its work on the issue of state capture and anti-corruption. The international law firm Constantin Cannon, which is specialized in representing whistleblowers. The Government Accountability Project, which is an organization that is leader in whistleblower advocacy at the global level, and the international podcast, What Does It Profit?, which focuses on the social and moral value of business. In that regard, I would like to give a special thank you to Rosalind Stefanov, Mary Inman, Samantha Feinstein, and Don Carpenter for their outstanding assistance. The organization of the project events in particular would not have been possible without their incredible support. Now, let me, before looking at what we've done in terms of activity, I would like to um, look at the terminological aspect. We will, we will speak about disinformation, but disinformation is a very complex and multifaceted phenomena, phenomenon. So basically, uh, when we speak about disinformation, we uh, speak about different phenomena, uh, which include disinformation per se, that means the intentional active or passive dissemination of fake news or misleading information, but it also includes misinformation, that is when basically this misleading information is spread without intent, for example, with negligence or even in good faith. But it also includes malinformation, that is basically the use of a genuine information, so something that is true, but is spread because you would like to cause harm. So for example, you would like to divert attention away from, from something that is, you know, uh, most relevant. And also we think that it's very important to include in the concept of disinformation, suppression of information. That means a situation in which important or relevant facts and conclusions that are in the public interest to be disclosed are concealed or withheld for the public domain. So we will, for simplicity, everybody in, in will speak about this information, but in reality, we will, you know, this is a reference to all these different phenomena. So let's see what we have done so far in this project. The first thing that we have done has been uh, organizing two uh, international roundtable discussion sessions. Uh, the first one was on January 2022 and was focused on disinformation in the private sector. Uh, that event aimed at exploring a seri series of burning issues, including the legal, the legal relevance of disinformation, economic interest in the spread of disinformation, the role of social media platform in spreading disinformation, uh, the issue of contaminated research, and of course, the issue of disinformation uh, within the pandemic uh, scenario and the role of whistleblowers in unveiling this information. We then uh, focused uh, on another event that uh, basically was the second roundtable session, and it was in February, 2022. And this one was focused on disinformation in the public sector. So here we look at issues like disinformation and populism, the consequences risks related to disinformation in democratic countries, lack of independence of media and government attacks on journalists, absence of transparency and abuse of classification procedures in the public administration, scientific integrity, right to education, conflict of interest, and corruption. After the two thematic discussion, we have also produced a special edition podcast uh, entitled Value of Truth in Science. This has been produced by our partner, What Does It Profit? And in this episode, uh, Dr. Don Carpenter has engaged in conversation with uh, a microbiologist, uh, which is, uh, who is actually a whistleblower, Dr. Elizabeth Bick, and Dr. Ivan Oransky, a journalist, editor, and educator. Uh, principally, the discussion focused on scientific integrity and what it means to be a whistleblower in science. Um, 
we have also produced um, a technical report, the critical role that whistleblowers play in countering COVID-19 disinformation. This brilliant uh, technical report has been authored by Samantha Feinstein and Anna Kim and produced by our partner, Government Accountability Project. So the purpose of this study has been to examine the critical role that whistleblowers played in countering disinformation during COVID-19 pandemic. The report has highlighted that the laws that protect the free speech are inadequate to protect whistleblowers. The channel for investigation are unable to handle the disclosure in an appropriate manner, and nations fail to implement meaningful whistleblower protections. We have also launched an international poster competition, and the purpose of this poster competition was to assure a, a level of interaction with students and early career researchers. And this was, this was an open call, and uh, basically uh, the evaluation panel uh, that was led by Professor Mark James awarded three prizes and a special mention. The winner uh, will have the opportunity to present their poster during the works of this conference tomorrow. And the poster and the supporting documents may be already accessed on the project website at the link uh, that is in the slide. Finally, I would like to say that the project has benefited greatly uh, from the input and contribution of several whistleblowers. We are very proud to have had the opportunity to share their stories and to learn from their experiences. Uh, we would like to emphasize our continuous support for their cause, acknowledge their valuable societal contribution, and recognize the ongoing need for significant meaningful reform to empower and protect them. And let me add that all the outcomes of the project, all the materials we have produced, all the video recordings of our event are uh, accessible online on our partner uh, platform, uh, the Corporate Crime Observatory, that serves as uh, the long-term repository for uh, all our material. Uh, and it's accessible at the website www.corporatecrime.co.uk slash whistling at the fake. Um, finally, uh, let me say, I'd like to give a big thank you to all our terrific panelists who will present today and all the members of the audience that have been taking the time to be with us during the course of this international conference. I hope you will enjoy the discussion and take the chance to interact with our amazing experts during the question and answer times. So I'm now delighted to give the floor to Professor Diane Ring, which will, uh, who will moderate our first panel entitled Whistleblowers as Gatekeepers of the Truth in the Age of Disinformation. Diane, the floor is yours.